All right. Uh, welcome back to Ask a Pastor. Uh, here today with just Riley. No guests today because we've got a lot to discuss without having a specific topic in mind outside of what is happening in and around us in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, we are kind of in the age of protest, it seems. Uh, we've got uh, border blockade at Coots. We've got Ottawa plugged right up. We've got the ledge here in Winnipeg plugged up. And now we also have the Emerson border uh, blockaded. Among other things, these are the probably the four largest things going on in Canada right now. What have you got to say about some of these things? And uh, what are the Christian responses to what's going on in our country? Yeah, before we get into that, would you mind if we just open with oh, a word well, of prayer? Absolutely. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you again for who you are and what you have done. Lord, we thank you for the peace that you brought to us. Lord, that we have peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask now that you would uh, bless this conversation. Uh, may your peace be evident. Um, and we pray for peace to uh, reign in this country. Uh, Lord, may, um, may this discussion be beneficial to all who hear, and may you be glorified in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, on those, on those topics, um, I had a few thoughts, and I, I just wanted to turn firstly to uh, Romans 12, not Romans 13. Oh, so I know it's a departure from our normal scripture. I know, I know. There, there is yeah. more to the Bible right. than just Romans thirteen. I mean, if you want to keep things in context, <laughs> then we have to sometimes deviate from Romans thirteen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, way back before there was Romans thirteen, there was Romans twelve. Right. Um, so here is just some uh, some pretty basic principles, and this is uh, you know Jesus outlines these in the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, here's Paul repeating them in Romans chapter twelve. It says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Now, then verse 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Now, I'm, I'm very grateful for uh, what has felt like something of turning of the tide yes. in our country. Um, there, this, this trucker <laughs> convoy, um, seemed like it came out of nowhere. Right. Very grassroots, kind of one or two guys were talking about something and then boom, all of a sudden there's thousands of truckers converging on Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, these principles here of, of not repaying evil for evil, but of overcoming evil with good right. is something, um, at least that I've seen a lot of from uh, the, some of the on the ground footage from Ottawa, uh, some of what you've seen in Winnipeg at the ledge yes. as well. Yes, really, really encouraging stuff. Yeah, how, how would you describe that there? What, what did you see while you were in Ottawa of that kind of thing? Well, in Ottawa, it was, it was actually pretty incredible to watch because the, okay, yeah, there was thousands of trucks. There was tens of thousands of people on the grounds there mm -hmm. at, at the parliament building. Um, actually interviewed several people working with WAM on, on site there, some live interviews, and just talking about some of the, the stuff that we heard and saw in mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Like there's all kinds of Nazi flags, there's all kinds of um, rebel flags, and just white supremacists everywhere. And, and to be honest, I saw none of that while I was there. Mm -hmm. I, I actually sought them out because I thought, who better to interview than the people who really hate what we're doing? Yeah. And, and they shouldn't have been hard to find. They would have been so easy to find if, if there was the, <laughs> the truth from the mainstream media. Right. So obviously mainstream was, was uh, blowing smoke on that one. Yeah. So I did end up talking to some, uh, some people there. Uh, a couple of black ladies uh, approached me and we talked for a while. And I just asked them, so are you afraid to be here downtown Ottawa? Well, they're like, why would we be afraid to be downtown? I was like, well, everybody here is a white supremacist. And they were like you know what, man, we haven't seen any of that. And we've been here for, for days. Mm -hmm. So no, it, it was very positive. Yeah. There was a lot of people giving away stuff. There was a lot of free food everywhere, free mm -hmm. drinks everywhere. Um, the one story from mainstream media was that these guys, truckers, went into a homeless shelter and stole food. So if you think that truckers are going to walk past mountains of free food to steal food from a homeless shelter, I think you need to get checked out. Right. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that just highlights the fact that there is a very, very strong push right now to, uh, from, it seems like, the mainstream media to, to vilify what we might call the freedom movement. Yes. Um, and I think part of where, where these biblical principles come in is that it, um, I think we've seen some of the power of this at play. Oh, certainly. Right. So where, where the command is, you know, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, right? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, I, it, it gets easy when you feel like you've been treated unfairly, especially for a long time, to respond in anger. Right. Right. Like what's the, what's the natural instinct? You get punched. Punch back. Right. Harder. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is where the Christian message is so uh, contra our natural sinful inclinations, where Jesus says, if you get slapped on the right cheek, turn turn the other cheek as well. Yeah. Um, and so for, for us, as we are as we are interacting with tyranny, <coughs> as we are interacting and, and challenging and protesting and doing these things, the temptation can be to return evil for evil. Um, and I just want to say from scripture uh, that it is so important that we don't. Um, and I've been very pleased with what I've seen of, uh, you know, the on the ground footage um, in places like Ottawa and Winnipeg. And I wanted to continue to commend that type of spirit of blessing those who persecute, uh, bless and do not curse. So firstly, because uh, God commands it. Right. I mean, any discussion, any debate you're having, you don't need any more reason than that, right? Why should you do this? Well, for one small thing, God said so. <laughs> it's like the main thing, right? Okay. Well, conversation settled right there. Right. Um, but secondly, um, this has power. Right? This has tremendous power. Uh, you know, the the Roman Empire persecuted Christians uh, within the first centuries of the church, and what they would do is they would, well march them to the Colosseum to be killed by lions. Um, and the Christians consistently responded with love, right? They, they were the ones that went and would take in the abandoned babies. Uh, they would bless those who persecuted them truly. And what happened as a result of that, uh, of that approach or that Christian ethic, um, is that it changed public opinion dramatically. Um, so right now, I think a huge part of our battle is in the court of public opinion, right? You, you see, that's basically the way that the government has been, has been deciding on mandates. Right. <clears throat> it seems that the more pressure they have from one side, they kind of swing the mandates that way. And then when the pressure swings yeah. the other way, they, they swing the mandates the other way. Yeah. And it's, it's been pretty obvious, uh, especially shortly after the, the, um, convoy reached the legislative building, mm -hmm. uh, Stephenson, it was, like days later, she was already talking about, well, we need to loosen some mandates. Right. It, it's just interesting because it's been that way the whole time. It's like, well, we're following the science. And what that, what that really means is we're following the perceived public opinion. Yes, it, right? it really does. So you kind of have this vicious cycle where uh, the, the experts are telling or promoting a message of fear. Uh, the people respond in fear. And then the government pulls the fearful people and then... <laughs> brings in the mandates based on what the people are saying. Right. So then people become less fearful, less fearful, less fearful. Things reopen a little bit. And then another another dose of fear gets pushed down. Right? Yeah. Um, so really, um, the court of public opinion is quite important in, yes. in this whole debate, um, in this whole uh, kerfuffle. <laughs> um, and so... The power here that we need to recognize is in not returning evil for evil, right? Um, if you are going to win within the court of public opinion, um, we must not return evil for evil, right? We must not curse when we are cursed, uh, but we must uh, overcome evil with good. Uh, so basically the, the, way, the way that we fight really, really matters. And so uh, I think the message we need for right now is to, is to hold that firmly, that we are not going to give in to anger, 
e yes. even if we feel that it is justifiable, right. uh, that we are not going to, um, we're not going to give any ammunition to those who would seek to vilify uh, the, the freedom side. I don't like the language of sides and right. everything, but I think you know what I mean. The people who are who are battling for freedom, mm -hmm. essentially, yeah. yeah. Let's not call it a side. Let's just say freedom fighting. Yeah, and um, yeah, there. It seems as though people are looking for any excuse to vilify freedom fighters. <laughs> um, don't give them any ammunition. Right. Right. And I I, I hear stories of people. Uh, working at stores who are who are ye being yelled at by those who don't want to wear masks, right? And that is supporting the narrative that these freedom fighters are the angry, uh, <laughs> extreme fringe group people, and that the majority of people are the sensible ones who are in favor of all the mandates, right? It's like that's kind of the narrative. Right. Don't don't give any ammunition to that narrative by being an angry person. Right. It's, and it's inappropriate either way to yell at a store clerk who hasn't made any rules, mm -hmm. who is probably between 15 and 20, mm -hmm. who's probably at their first job, and you should just like treat them with love and respect, regardless of the rules that are in that store. Right. Even if you choose not to wear a mask, still don't yell at them, still don't uh, berate them. Yeah, exactly. And um, don't act in a way that will bring further division. Right. Our, part of our complaint against what the government has done is that it has divided this country. Yes. It has divided neighbor against neighbor. Right. Yes. Within <laughs> within neighborhoods, there are people who live close to each other who are vilifying one another. Yes. At, based on your view on these issues. Right. Right. But based solely on opinion, right, about mm -hmm. these issues, and it's their view, it's their opinion. Yeah. They haven't actually taking the time to walk across the street and say, hey, this is what I think of what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. can, you, can you give a justification for it? And is there principles that are you using that, that would justify what, what's happening? Mm -hmm. um, there's a story out of Ottawa. This mother was just angry and thought everybody in the convoy was evil. So her daughter went and said, mom, come with me. We're going to walk downtown. And by the time they had walked halfway through the convoy, the mother was already saying, this is the most peace-loving and caring group of people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. In in protest. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so that's, that's a great illustration of what I'm driving at here. It's like, um, if people are angry, if people are responding in anger, um, you would simply be confirming that lady's initial <laughs> right. perspective. Right. So um, when we realize that a lot of this <laughs> has to do with the court of public opinion, we see how important it is that our behavior is above reproach. Yes. Right. That we do not fight in the way that our uh, opponents would accuse us of fighting, and hope that we go that way. I mean, they 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 are doing they're using tactics to try and push the freedom movement yeah. into the other lane, which is anger and hate. Right. Yeah. And so basically, don't don't let them succeed in that. Right. Right. Don't. Don't let them drive you into doing something that will confirm their narrative, <laughs> um, yeah. their preconceived ideas about you, um, and behave in a way that you will be able to still look your neighbor in the eye, let's say, five years after this is over, if it's ever over. Right. Um, you know, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, uh, blessed be the peacemakers. Right? Blessed are the peacemakers. Um, and my, my conviction as, as a freedom fighter as a freedom minded person um, is that you know I I'm, don't consider myself an angry radical right I, I love the Lord I love people uh, I love peace I love freedom and, and I want the best for myself and for my neighbors I, I don't want to see division um, and it and it grieves me that these issues have brought so much division between neighbors um, and so don't act in a way that will bring further division, uh, do what you can to be a peacemaker. Jesus says as well, uh, let your light shine before men um, so that men will see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Right. Um, and so we as Christians must display Christ-like behavior. And this really applies to everything that we do 
Um, and one of the places it's the easiest to forget is when we're fighting. Right. Right. Because we, we see, okay, there's, there's an evil that I need to go up against. And we can get the wrong idea in our heads that the ends justify the means. Right. Right. It's like, okay, well, because they're bad, now anything goes. Right. Which is, which is wrong. Which it's is wrong. It's an emotional response to yeah. an antagonist. Right. And so in everything that we do, we, we need to do so as Christians. Right. Which means we need to fight like Christians, which means that we will not use all of the tactics that our enemies would use against us. Right. Um, it's like, is it fair that they do it? Uh, and then if we do the same thing, we're vilified? No, that, no. of course it's not fair. Uh, that, that's hypocrisy. But the fact that there's hypocrisy in our opponents doesn't give us the right to behave in the same way. Right. I mean, it's easy to see when, when the left riots... Let's just call them left for, mm -hmm. uh, they burn down buildings, they destroy businesses, they destroy a lot of people's lives, and they get a pass. Mm -hmm. If the right, let's say, the freedom fighting community were to do that, they would just be eliminated. Right. Right? It would be, okay, it's all over, you guys are all arrested. It mm -hmm. would be that simple. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the, the fact that there's hypocrisy there uh, is is true. Yes. Right. There's not the same... Uh, standards being applied to, to riots and, and these types of legal protests. Um, and people should not get it wrong. I, I mentioned BLM. That's actually beside the point. Um, if, you, if you look at the demographic, let's say in Ottawa, let's say in Winnipeg, because those are the places that I've been a lot, um, there's a lot of mixed race there. We have a lot of white people. Um, I actually interviewed a bunch of uh, of, of black men and women, um, a Chinese guy I interviewed, and these guys are all there for the same purpose. These guys all are there because they love freedom. Mm -hmm. So I even I even hate to talk about the race end of it because it, it really has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, these guys, it was comedic because of the way the interview went. And I mean, I, I started the interview with, hi, are you guys white supremacists? And they all laughed and they loved it. Mm -hmm. But it really... It has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It should have been, do you guys love freedom? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, just back back to the point here that whatever whatever our ideological opponents might do doesn't let us off the hook. And, and that's that's true of all all of our life, right? With, this is probably some of the best, best marriage advice I could possibly <laughs> give. I, I think as Joel Beakey said, uh, what your wife's behavior towards you is none of your business. Right. Which is true in one sense and, and maybe not in another. But what he's getting at there is that however somebody else treats me doesn't give me an excuse to treat them poorly. That is absolutely perfect marital advice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to remember, I am going to stand before God and give an account. Right. I will be judged on the basis of what I did. Um, I'm not going to get to use the excuse yeah, but God, yeah. do you know what they did to me? They started it. Right, oh, right. Uh, that, yeah. It's like we have, we have that old family resemblance from the Garden of Eden. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> like what, what happens? They, there's sin. God comes and says to Adam, you know, did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? What's his first response? The woman you gave me. He kind of blames, <laughs> he blames Eve and he kind of blames God. Right? right? Yeah. You yeah. gave me this woman who tempted me into evil. Right, right. It's like... <laughs> Anything but right. There's me. no no mirror here. It's yeah. just all outward. Um, those kinds of excuses will not fly no. on Judgment Day. Um, and nor so, should they. Nor should they. We ha we have a just judge, um, and so each one of us will have to stand before Christ and give an account of ourselves to God. Right. Um, and so, uh, in everything we do, we need to do it as Christians. Um, we need to do so in a way that is above reproach. Uh, we need to do so as peacemakers. Uh, we need to do so to display joy and life and, and not do anything that would confirm the false narrative of freedom-loving people. Right. Right? It, it, it would sadden me to think that, um, a let's say, a non-Christian shop owner, their only perspective of Christians is that, well, I think the guy who just yelled at me about having to wear a mask was a believer. 
right? And that's what I know of Christianity, right? Right. Um, we are to be kingdom people. We are to be, uh, Jesus calls us a, a light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are a city on a hill. Um, I was chatting with my friend the other day and he talked about, uh, you know, the way that Tom Bombadale functions in, in Middle Earth, where, if you've read Lord of the Rings, I don't know, um, where he is, <laughs> and, and anyway, you don't need to know it to get this point, but he is basically a splash of color in a gray world. Um, and it's like, what a great illustration of how the Christian ought to function within the world. Right. Um, so let us be that. Let us be a splash of color in a gray world. Let the light of Christ shine from us, even as we're fighting, right? Even as we're going into something difficult and um, it feels like the gloves have come off. It's like, okay, there's still rules. There's still um, very, very, it's still very important um, how we fight uh, and that we fight and not lose our joy yes. in God, that we not lose sight of the fact that we are trying to be peacemakers, that we are trying to, uh, we, we, that we are operating because of our love for our neighbor, right? The things we're doing is, is because we love God and love neighbor. Um, and if you fall into anger, if you begin to return evil for evil, that message is not going to come through, right? You, you aren't communicating love for neighbor by returning evil for evil. Right. So I was in Winnipeg at the ledge the other day, mm -hmm. and there was an Antifa counter protest. So as we've seen throughout the years, Antifa's kind of stood against government, uh, not overreach, but just basically government in general. Mm -hmm. So it was really kind of funny to watch the Antifa um, stand behind mask mandates and stand behind the restrictions mm -hmm. and standing lockstep with the government, yeah. which is really odd to see. But the thing that really stood out to me was the way that the two crowds interacted. Mm -hmm. So on the north side of the street, which the police did a very, very good job of separating the two groups so that there would be no confrontation outside of verbal. So on the north side of the street, you had Canada flags, uh, signs that said, we love you, uh, we care about you and your future. And on the south side of the street, not a single Canada, f oh, sorry, I shouldn't say, I saw one Canada flag in the group of five, 600 people. And the majority of their signs were filled with hate and vitriol. Like it was, mm -hmm. go to hell, uh, go home, Satan. Um, you are, you're killing my family. There was nothing there about love. There was nothing there encouraging. It was all to tear down. And that's a good example of where the way that you're being treated doesn't let you off the hook to um, do the same thing, right? So people are cursing at you. People are uh, not responding well, not treating you with respect. Uh, the, the fact is, you are still accountable to God for how you respond to them, right? Right. Um, you know, I think it was Joel Beakey made the point that uh, uh, within marriage, your wife's behavior is none of your business. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and what he means by that is to say that um, however you're being treated doesn't let you off the hook, right? Your responsibility to God remains, right? We all have that old uh, family resemblance to Adam and Eve, right? Because what did they do uh, when... Um, you know, what, what did Adam say when God asked him, have you eaten of the tree that I commanded of you not to eat? It's like, well, he started pointing fingers everywhere. Right, that the woman that you gave me right. tempted me into evil. Yeah, yeah, Adam blamed God, he blamed Eve, he did anything other than take responsibility. Right. And we have that same temptation, right? We, we tend to think that, well, people treating me poorly gives me an excuse to treat them poorly. Right, and it, and it doesn't. It doesn't, no. And, and this command here is so clear. Do not repay evil for evil, right? Overcome evil with good. Um, we will stand before God. We will stand before our maker and have to give an account. Um, tr and true freedom is found um, only in Christ, right? So there's, there's a relation between that concept of standing before God and understanding uh, true tyranny, right? right. Uh, who, who is Satan? Well, he's the tempter. He is the tempter. He is also the, the accuser, accuser, right? The name Satan means accuser. Um, and accusation 
is his powerful, powerful weapon. Right. Right. Because we stand before God and the accuser comes and he points and says, guilty. Right. And to somebody who is outside of Christ, that accusation is true. But as a Christian, we're covered by the blood and we're seen as righteous. Yes. And so for everybody who loves freedom, we need to understand that true freedom is only found in Christ. Right? He has freed us from Satan's tyranny, uh, from our slavery to sin. You know, Jesus says anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Uh, Jesus gives us freedom uh, by dying on the cross in our place, taking the penalty that we deserve. Um, and so now, uh, if, if we stand before God and Satan says, guilty, guilty, bringing an accusation, um, we say, yes, but Christ has borne my guilt. Right. right. And there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ, Romans 8, verse 1. Um, so his accusation no longer stands uh, there is true freedom in Christ. And so for us as Christians, we need to display that we are people who are free. Right? What an incredible opportunity with all of this stuff going on to be that to be on display in that way now. Yeah, yeah. We, have, um, we have been indwelt with the Holy Spirit uh, who produces fruit in us, right? The, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. Self-control, yeah. Um, now, right there is a, the last one is a good one. Self-control. Self-control, right? How how important in that uh, we do not, you know, let ourselves go flying off the handle. Right. We do not respond in anger, uh, but to display the love of Christ, to display joy, um, to show that there is something different in us. Right? Jesus says, "You are the light of the world." Uh, let your light shine before men that they would see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Right? That's the calling for us as Christians. Right? We have a message that is different from the world. Um, and we will not display that message. We will not live out that message by behaving like the world. Um, you know, Titus tells us to adorn our doctrine with good works. Right? So there's the, <laughs> there's the old phrase, use the gospel uh, Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. It's well, like, that's nonsense. Yeah. Uh, there is no gospel without words. The words right? you, are the gospel. Right? You, you have to communicate these ideas. Nobody's ever going to come to understand Christ by watching you sweep the floor. Right. Right. Uh, but there Wow, is, that guy is sweeping the floor with so much love. Yeah. I'm, it's not going to do it. Now I'm going to repent of my sins and trust in Christ yeah, for salvation. Right. No. No. But there is a very true sense in which we are to adorn our doctrine by our good works. Uh, by our attitude, by the way in which we engage. Um, so let it not be said uh, that Christians are angry people, or I should say at the very least, let it not be true. Right. Right. It will be said. It will be said. Like yeah. right, Jesus said, they will uh, falsely say all kinds of evil things against you for my sake. Uh, but he says, when they do that, rejoice and be glad, for so that's how they treated the prophets. Yes. Um, so that will happen anyway, but don't let there be any truth behind it. And instead, let us adorn our doctrine uh, through righteous living uh, by not returning evil for evil. Uh, and let us display the love of Christ um, through everything that we do, uh, including the way that we fight. Amen. What an incredible conversation. Thank you so much, Riley. Um, yeah, so let's get out there and uh, be a beacon of light and share the gospel. Amen.